Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. Educators discuss government plans for the education sector as the EQIP program comes on stream. The Republic of China Taiwan supports the Department of Health and Wellness in bringing attention to the harmful effects of tobacco. The awareness campaign on dental health is capped with a comic strip competition. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyo. Spearheaded by the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, the Education Quality Improvement Project EQIP is on stream. Funding for the project was secured from the Caribbean Development Bank, the CDB, through the Department of Economic Development, Transport and Civil Aviation. EQIP formed part of discussions at the Tumli meeting of school principals and officials of the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development. The Education Quality Improvement Project, equipped, is geared towards the enhancement of St. Lucia's education sector as envisaged by the government of St. Lucia. The policy on education is centered around building a sector that is responsive to the diverse needs of St. Lucia's children, young people and adults alike. Developing graduate students capable of taking their place in the international economic and social community as well. One component of the EQIP is enhancing capacity to improve teacher quality, relevance of education, and instructional effectiveness across the education sector. This project also focuses on enhancing the provisions for special needs education in St. Lucia. In fulfilling these objectives, short-term and degree-level continuing professional development training programs are provided for teachers. Among those opportunities is the undertaking of master's programs at the University of New Brunswick. Minister for Education, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, updated educators on the progress of the program thus far at the termly meeting with ministry officials. The team is currently on a study tour in Trinidad and they are very excited about reporting back to us what they would have learned from what I suspect is exposure to international best practice that can be replicated here in St. Lucia. The Education Minister also indicated that due consideration is being given to the conversion of select secondary schools into sixth form schools. Honorable Rigobert explained the rationale. We can afford more students an opportunity to do CAPE versus the limited number of 100 or so who get to go to A-level college. Let me repeat, it is an ambition that is not yet cast in stone because we will have to engage with the schools that are likely to be affected. I want to say up front though that we are mindful to ensure that there is good geographic spread. The government of St. Lucia has received financing from the Caribbean Development Bank, the CDB, equivalent to US dollars towards the cost of implementing the equipped project. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The government of St. Lucia has adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. This initiative consists of 17 goals at its core, which is intended to build on goal-setting agendas and is under the direction of the Department of Sustainable Development. St. Lucia, along with many other global leaders, made a commitment to promote sustainable development by signing on to the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development, which has replaced the Millennium Development Goals, or MDGs, a more robust and enhanced set of goals that focuses on people, planet, prosperity, peace and partnership. The agenda is made up of 17 Sustainable Development Goals SDGs and 169 corresponding targets. Countries must now take ownership of the SDGs and develop strategies. The United Nations developed the mainstreaming, acceleration and policy support maps to guide countries in landing the SDGs international development plans with technical expertise from the UN systems. St. Lucia began engagement with the UNDP in 2016 with the aim of developing an SDG roadmap for the country. The Department of Economic Development has been actively participating in the 2013 Agenda for Sustainable Development. 
In St. Lucia, we have sought to establish the strategic alignment between the SDGs and our development pillars as identified in the National Development Plan. The pillars were used as a springboard for the Medium Term Development Strategy, MTDS, which is, which is the immediate focus of the Government of St. Lucia over the period 2019 to 2021. The MTDS is expected to deliver initiatives across six key result areas, or what we call the KRAs, which emerge out of a process of consultation among key stakeholders. And the six KRAs are as follows, citizen security, infrastructure, agriculture, education, tourism, and health. To catalyze the process, the mainstreaming acceleration and policy support MAP's common approach is being adopted. This engagement aims to assist St. Lucia in making significant strides towards achieving Agenda 2030. The acting permanent secretary in the Department of Sustainable Development says the task ahead is a daunting one, but is also achievable through an all-inclusive strategic approach. To ensure that we positioned ourselves to pursue the implementation of the agenda, an institutional structure was put in place by establishing a cabinet endorse Sustainable Development Goals National Coordinating Committee. Through this committee, along with the work done by other stakeholders, we have undertaken a number of activities aimed at guiding the implementation and the monitoring of the SDGs. The committee has been guiding the way towards the development of an SDG roadmap for St. Lucia emanating from the MAPS initiatives. At the end of the engagement process, it is anticipated that there will be an SDG integrated and risk-informed national development plan, the identification of development finance solutions towards meeting targets, and a work plan for monitoring and evaluating the targets. As World No Tobacco Day approaches, the Department of Health and Wellness is bringing attention to the harmful and deadly effects of tobacco use and secondhand smoke exposure and to discourage the use of tobacco in any form. Anissa Antoine reports. The tobacco epidemic is one of the biggest public health threats the world has ever faced, killing more than 7 million people a year. More than 6 million of those deaths are the result of direct tobacco use, while around 890,000 are the result of non-smokers being exposed to secondhand smoke. The Ministry of Health and Wellness recently launched its campaign for World No Tobacco Day 2019 and is partnering with the National Commission on Chronic Non-Communicable Diseases to bring attention to the issues of tobacco use in St. Lucia. According to the tobacco control focal point, Joanna Joseph, the trend is worrying. A lot of people believe that we don't have a problem with tobacco. Yes, we do. It is a very serious issue and what we are noticing is that our young persons are starting to smoke and they are smoking at even younger ages. Our last global youth tobacco survey, which is an international survey for tobacco um, issues, uh, tobacco surveillance actually, indicates that up to a quarter of our young people, and this, these are very young people, ages 13 to 15, are already smoking. And out of that, almost 10% of them are smoking daily. So when we say that there is no problem, we know that this is not the case. Our, our statistics are indicating that we have a major problem. This year's campaign is significant for the National Commission on Chronic Non-Communicable Diseases as it seeks to target the youth. The World Health Organization recommends that governments and communities prioritize tobacco control in order to achieve Sustainable Development Goals target for one-third reduction in non-communicable disease premature mortality by 2030. The most effective measure to improve lung health is to reduce tobacco use and secondhand smoke exposure. However, the potential of tobacco control for improving health, lung health is highly underestimated. And this is why this campaign is important. By adopting tobacco and lung health as the theme for World No Tobacco Day 2019, WHO encourages parties to organize campaigns to increase the awareness on the negative impact of, that tobacco has on people's lung health, from cancer to chronic respiratory diseases, and on the fundamental role lungs play for the health and well-being of all people. 
The senior medical officer for chronic non-communicable disease says NCDs are a significant problem in St. Lucia where 8 out of 10 adults die from chronic NCDs like diabetes, cancer, lung disease and cardiovascular disease. Tobacco smoking is one of the main risk factors for such diseases. And in St. Lucia, one of the, the trends we've noticed is that persons are dying from chronic respiratory diseases such as um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease where this individual has lungs but they don't work well and he or she is actually unable to breathe in a room full of air. And it's, it's really sad. I've had the personal experiences of seeing persons less than 40 years old, which is pretty young, actually dying from diseases like that. Of course, we know that tobacco smoking causes cancer, it causes um, heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, raises the blood pressure. There really is nothing beneficial about tobacco smoking. And I just want to appeal to the St. Lucian public that um, if you smoke, you need to stop. And that um, quitting actually lowers your risk for developing such diseases. It protects you and it protects your family members. World No Tobacco Day will be observed on May 31st, 2019, with the focus on tobacco and lung health. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. Means I'm the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, provides support in the fight for tobacco control. More on this report from Miguel Morissette. The Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan, his Excellency Douglas Shen recently presented a check valued at EC $5,000 to the Department of Health and Wellness. The check presentation represented a contribution towards the World No Tobacco campaign, aimed at raising awareness among St. Lucians about the dangers of tobacco smoke to one's health and well-being. His Excellency Douglas Shen expressed pleasure in providing financial support to boost activities that will discourage the use of tobacco in any form. This event is in, in of the observance of uh, World Health Organization's annual World No Tobacco Day. Although Taiwan is unfortunately not a member of a World Health Organization, it is the king on fulfilling its responsibility as a constructive member of the global community and committed to work with the government of St. Lucia together with the non-government organization to better promote public health, fight against tobacco and achieve WHO's 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, thanked the Taiwanese government for their gesture and says it will assist in the fight against the deadly effects of tobacco smoke and secondhand smoke exposure. What you are doing here today, assisting us to spread the news, to spread the information, to continue to educate our people about tobacco, is going to go a long way in our society to assisting us with the cost of health care as well as the cost of health for our people. We at the Ministry of Health are doing everything that we possibly can to try to encourage people to look at primary health care, preventative health care. So instead of smoking and then at the end of the day you try to treat the, the effects of that smoking, we want to call on the public, we want to call on all St. Lucians to, in the first instance, protect your health by not taking up that cigarette, by not smoking anything. Deputy Coordinator of the Substance Abuse Unit, Joanna Joseph, says, as the unit undertakes a series of activities for World No Tobacco Day, a call is made to fight the tobacco epidemic. This is a really important occasion and we've been trying at the Ministry of Health for this is our second consecutive campaign for World No Tobacco Day to really bring awareness to our people of the dangers and the need for us to, to do something serious about smoking. So this year we are going much bigger than we did last year and so the support from the agencies who have assisted so far. We have Pahu who is always on board and this year we are joined by your embassy and we are very appreciated. World Tobacco Day is celebrated around the world every year on May 31st. From the Communications Unit in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Miguel Morissette reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Climat la terre can change, et ça can affecter nous toutes. Cyclone qui a venu plus mauvais, gros l'eau et la pendule.
ka de twiz animo ek plan. Kwan la men ka abedi pli chou, e ka twe plas ki se preson nas la ka abedi. La men chou a ka osi chanje mwenye se preson ka kite yon kote ek ale an lot kote. Set lisi ka kontibite an piti ti zin gas an espans. Kwan ti peyi, nou ka esi efe tout sa nou sa fe kwan sewe ki nou bese asou kantite gas nou ka sevi pou an peche la te abedi pli chou. E fou pou bese asou kantite gas nou ka sevi se mitigasyon. Kouma han chanje. E ha chay la le, depi nom tout ou le wan la te a kabule gas, luil, ek che bon. Ek sa ka an e koz la te a vin an chay pli chou. Sa nou ne pou fe a chom mamen nou, se pou alap te. Fe tout sa nou sa fe pou prepare ek rebode pou se konsekwens negatif a la koz de chanjman klima. Nou tout sa fe ke chouye. Pa ekzamp, nou ni pou asire ki nou protekte tout sa nou ka planti. Se vi fimye ki nati wel. Bati kay nou pou wabate damanj an tan siklon ek godlo. Konstu kanal pou dlo an koui byen kon el fo. Ek asire ki kanal la pa ni zodi. Fe tout sa ki posi pou viv an tan chanjman klima sa. Toube pi informasyon aso plan adaptasyon nasyonal gouvernman ek demanj ou menm sa pran pou protekte kou ek tout lot set li siyen. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hello, and welcome once again to your update on happenings in youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The Interdistrict Primary School's female football competition came off at the Sarplane Field on Wednesday as planned. School sports coordinator Isabel Alexander Markey was on hand to witness the initiative being promoted through the collaborative efforts of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, the Ministry of Education and the St. Lucia Football Association. Today we are actually witnessing the, the, the first an inaugural competition. Well, it's a competition, but then it's something that we're starting new in collaboration with the Football Association and the Ministry of Education for primary schools female football. So um, we have the, an inter-district competition happening within the, around the island. We have the a northern zone, which comprises of districts one to four, and we have the southern zone, which will comprise of districts five to eight. And so we have today with us districts 1, 2 and 4 in this competition. What we're looking for is to build, to assist in, in building the, the female football in St. Lucia. And then the Football Association has taken on the mantle of trying to develop it from the, second, from the primary school level. And so this is what we are witnessing here, the first in many competitions to come of primary school's female football. Schools in the southern zone will be engaged on Friday, May 10th for their competition. Physical education and sports teachers are among a group of participants benefiting from a five-day FINA-approved Level 1 open water swim course currently being held in St. Lucia. FINA lecturer Stephen Cassidy is conducting the course. I'm thrilled with the participation of the course here, you know, to have so many physical education teachers be able to make time to share with us some of the strategies of open water swimming safety, how we can build the competitive aspects of it, but most importantly, how you can use the great resources you have here, such a beautiful island and of course the sea and the ocean, you can't beat it. So far we've worked on a lot of the aspects of safety, event management, and administrative duties of the officials. And this is an introductory course, a clinic level, so that we can introduce everyone to the aspects of FINA. FINA is the world governing body for open water, but also to see what the needs of the St. Lucians are. Now, I believe that every St. Lucian should know how to swim, and the belief system of all of these teachers here mirrors that thought. Physical education teacher Tarek Edward of the Cicero Secondary School is one of the course participants. We started a swimming program with our physical education and sports students, specifically from threes and fours, um, where we currently use the VG Beach as the area for practice. So this clinic will give us um, more insight when it comes to safety, as well as technique and other skills which are fundamental. 
in um, developing our swimmers at the school. So we're looking at both competitive swimming and open water swimming as well. The indoor sessions for the course is being held at the headquarters of the St. Lucia Olympic Committee Incorporated. And that's your update on youth development and sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Nisha? Thanks, Ryan. The Dental Services Unit in the Department of Health and Wellness has launched the first ever dental comic strip competition as part of an oral health promotion campaign. It targets young adults between 18 and 35 years. It is meant to encourage young people to take charge of their life in a healthy and positive way. The unit wants the public to know that poor oral hygiene can be a symptom of disease or can set the stage for undesirous outcomes, especially in their social interactions. Dr. Sherry Ephraim Lecomte is the senior dental health surgeon. The objective of the competition is to increase knowledge on halitosis, inform on what it means to have halitosis, how it can be prevented, what it can be a sign of, and more. The competition aims to encourage the competitors to do their own research on halitosis, come up with a concept they think best encapsulates it, highlight the associated impacts, and how it can be prevented or treated, and capturing it all in a comic strip. It's a way for them to create their own vision of such an important issue in a fun and exciting way. An exhibition of the submitted posters is planned at a place and time to be announced in order for the public to view talent and gain more insight on halitosis. The unit will conduct a survey to ascertain the impact this health promotion activity will have on the knowledge, attitude, and practices of the public. And that was the senior dental health surgeon, Dr. Sherry Ephraim Leconte. Stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Quayol. Hypertension is a deadly disease that is common in St. Lucia. We depend on blood pressure monitors to determine if our blood pressure is too high or too low. Should a reading on these measuring devices be incorrect, we are literally putting our lives at risk. Doctors, caregivers, and patients, get your blood pressure meters verified by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards to ensure the accuracy of measuring devices. Look for the green pass sticker on the blood pressure meter at your next visit to the doctor. The correct reading can mean the difference between life and death. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arquillon. Monsieur, Madame, Département de l'Université Responsabilité pour l'information au gouvernement de la GIS, ASMBP, Télévision Nationale, pays à NTN, Capazato, Nouvelle Arquillon, Capazato, Primus Hutchinson. C'est le cas pour un pli concernant les gens pays qui vivent à l'autre pays, mais qui continuent pour jouer un rôle en développement de cette ci Directeur des affaires d'Aspora, c'est le Dr. Joyce Lynn Clark Fletcher, est en studio NTN pour expliquer la significance de l'initiative nouveau ça là, et à quelle façon il a aidé cette ci Selon Dr. Fletcher, l'année en l'eau, c'est le sien qui habite à l'autre pays, mais qui a fait contribution toutes les pour le développement du pays. Il marque que l'ANISA qui a aidé la famille et puis Barrel Commission qui a bâti magical maison et plusieurs autres façons que les autres personnes qui bénéficient en ligne de travail en diverses manières. Et ces personnes qui ont fait l'argent cette ici par la famille, ils ont fait ces gros cas ça, les gens qui ont fait le travail, ces boutiques qui ont fait le ciment, et ça avec tout ça, il y a café l'argent, peinti, tout ça. So, um, uh, um, World Bank dit, um, Diaspora, qui a mis uh, 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 um, l'argent de cette liste, Massa dit 45 millions en créole, mais 45, over 45 millions. Vous okay. savez? So, c'est ça, Diaspora qui a fait by cette liste. Donc, il y a qui même reste l'autre pays pour un bon de trois temps, déclare que. Bureau qui a présenté une discussion et puis c'est cette liste ça là à l'autre pays pour encourager eux pour placer encore plus l'intérêt en développement pays. Travaille moins 
pour gouvernement nous ca parler bay ces monde ça nous ca faire bay aiser ici pour yo virer pour yo mettre pour faire business en pays là pour porter l'argent yo en pays là c'est nous nous ca parler bay ou pas mêler mobilisation qui mon qui qui gouvernement ca c'est porter ça pas important ça qui est porter c'est cette lycéen ou ou mes pays moi là pour dou qui ça gouvernement pas faire ba ou pour et ne bougou vini vivre ici am vin invest business ou set li ici fè ba aiser pou sa vini an peyi ou menm menm sou ek train ou an peyi a ou konnen tout sa ka fèt koye a ek ou sa am ede am ede an moun ki set li ici ou a vann ba yo lòt peyi se sou sa nou ka pale ba yo nou ka ouvè ba yo ek mwen la pou 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 am travay et pi diaspora seulement Bank Mondial, j'ai publié que mon cette liste qui a resté l'autre pays a dépensé à haut de 33 millions de dollars à cette liste. Il y a une organisation qui a porté nous à Make It Happen. Ça, c'est une fondation qui ni la théorie pour aider les polices avec les propriétaires pour augmenter les goûts de travail. J'ai encore un souk pour ça. C'est pour les femmes qui ont un risque d'abusement et de violence. Ça, c'est violence domestique. Fondation qui a aidé ces femmes là avec ses enfants qui ont dépensé. En mois de mars, Fondation a été un spectacle qui a porté à plus de 300 femmes ensemble pour aider à battre et en l'offrant pour ça qui a été pour les femmes qui ont battu les abusements. Le 29 avril, Fondation a été fait une présentation en hauteur de 15 000 dollars pour ça là et ça c'est madame Raquel Dibolé Chasté qui est en tête de la fondation. Cette pour une femme secours est établie en l'année 2 millions. Côté, elle est là pour une secours pour un moment et pour une femme et sa femme qui a trouvé abusé. En ce moment qui passe, cette là, j'ai développé un programme des assistances. Côté, c'est sa femme, c'est madame Sala, trouver assistance pour acheter des livres et l'autre nécessité de l'école et des lèvres juste pour payer pour l'école qui a assisté. Chef Satla, Sylvie Edward, bien remercie la Fondation pour qu'on assiste à ça. L'ambassade de la République Chine de Taïwan, Douglas Chin, a présenté récemment un chèque à valeur 5 000 dollars pour le département de la santé. La présentation de chèque Salah, c'était une contribution qui a regardé l'effort de la Banque mondiale pour faire le peuple de la terre et ceci principalement plus sensible pour danger qui tabac ni pour sa témoin. Ambassade Chine dit qu'il est plein qui paye à sa aide, il y a des pays qui sont aidés cette ci pour avoir des problèmes fumés et pour décourager les gens pour servir le tabac. Ministre de la Santé, Honorable Mary Isaac, remercie l'ambassade là autant et dit que la présentation ça là qui a assisté à la bataille qui paye à chaque affaire pour avoir des danger qui fumé le tabac qui a porté pour sa santé. Assistant coordinateur du département contre l'abusement de drogue et d'alcool, Johanna Joseph, déclare qu'il a déjà commencé plusieurs activités pour observer ce jeune contre le fumé de tabac. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons trouvé une nouvelle. Je vous remercie autant pour garder, je vous remercie une invitation pour que je puisse me conseiller, conserver la vie, les réponses de l'autre nouvelle. À quoi il y a la présent, nous avons vu pour Michel. Merci on Pearl Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Skies are generally fair, becoming cloudy at times with a few scattered showers. The Atlantic High Pressure System will maintain a moderate to brisk easterly wind flow across the Eastern Caribbean region during the forecast period. Low-level clouds drifting along this wind flow will bring a few scattered showers over the islands during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries was low at 12.23 p.m. and is high at present. The tide for VA4 Bay low at 1.50 p.m. and will be high again at 8.23 p.m. The sea is moderate to locally rough with waves 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters. The sun will rise Thursday at 5.38 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.